Thank you. Thank you both. And we're also reminded that art and artists and creativity crosses all these boundaries. And one of these boundaries is the abyss between destruction, the abyss between all that's lost and what could be regained and what the hope. So there, there's a boundary there that art, art, art crosses. And one of the questioners wants to know a little bit more about how we create these kind of safe spaces that art, art makes uh, for people. Uh, talk a little bit more about that. How can we use that and, and uh, develop that and create those spaces? Um, I would say that one of the important things to creating a safe space, which I am constantly talking about in the classroom as well, um, is that when it comes to art, really nothing's inappropriate. <laughs> you know, I mean, you have pigs copulating. <laughs> Um, and really nothing is inappropriate or out of bounds as it relates to that individual's need to express something. Yeah. Now, especially in the classroom, I, you know, that requires a lot of guidance. Yeah. Um, but how can we foster that as Christians is actually very challenging because a lot of what comes with art is not always full of life. A lot of it is broken and painful and hurting. Um, but I think that those moments need to be protected so that artists can feel that they can actually be vulnerable in a sacred yeah. space. And that's something that I think, man, Christians maybe haven't always been the best at. And the church isn't a, p a place like that. Yeah. Yeah. So I think like, you know, if we want to create safe spaces rather than dictating how something should look, perhaps when something doesn't look the way we would like it to look, we ask why? Why did you make this? Why are you describing something this way? What is this about? Um, mm. And usually that discourse and that dialogue can open up a safe space. Good. Good. Thank you. I'll only add the historical circumstance that as religion was opening up and, and as Christianity or Christian faith witness in China gained momentum in the 1990s, um, it gave birth generated the safe spaces in Beijing and in other cities for artists to actually express the angst, the feelings that they're going mm -hmm. through. Um, and to my surprise, there's an area in Beijing, and, and Joyce knows it, six, uh, 798, uh, that is um, a huge area of showing not only uh, showing contemporary art, some of which is Christian art. It's not all that way. Um, and I've been amazed that that space has been allowed to stay open, uh, to, to, that the artist can stay creative. And I worry it, that that may, may not be for long. Mm -hmm. And I mean, one thing I, I maybe should add is that oftentimes people are very, um, they don't trust artists and yet they want to provide a safe space for these people. And so like the um, dogs that cannot touch each other piece, you know, the protesters probably didn't know that there were veterinarians checking every single dog before and after the performance. Did they ask the artists about that? No, they just protested it without realizing that artists are very sensitive creatures. I mean, people that can feel these things and that is why they feel the need to express them. Oftentimes they've already thought through the violence that they're depicting, yeah. you know? So it's, it's, it requires some trust on our behalf as well to, to trust that these people are not just, you know, trying to do something negative. For, for Christians, we have problems on both sides here. We have problems in the art world uh, uh, in, in discussing and being honest about our Christian faith and all. But we, we have equal and maybe worse problems in the church where there are suspicions toward the arts and, and we have questions from the audience on both sides. Maybe to start with the, the sort of art world, uh, somebody's asking uh, whether... Uh, that's changing and there's becoming more of an openness to, to religious. You think of that Muslim, uh, even though she's not a practicing Muslim, she's really bringing in Muslim themes into mm -hmm. the art world. I mean, is that, mm -hmm. is that a sign that there's an opening to, uh, to religious themes? And, and I'm going to jump in here and say um, the artists that I know, and I'm going to, we're going to have a few of these artists here with us in the spring with a China Initiative's Chinese Christian Art Symposium Good. in late April. One, uh, and some of, we're going to bring Daozi and Ju, Ju Xiaoyang. Uh, and so we're going to bring some of these artists here. 
And the greatest thing I challenge I have is to write an invitation letter that will not be suspect. It has, I have to focus on the art and not the Christian side of it. And so it's still a very tentative space. Right. Um, and becoming more tentative, I'm afraid. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. I would also say, I mean, kind of building off of that thought, it seems like Chinese authorities, I mean, they're always changing their tactics, so this is not always consistent, and that's on purpose, um, but that they are more open to the idea of scholarship and history as opposed to spiritual allegiance or religious allegiance. And I actually would say that um, artists oftentimes who may be using religious symbolism in their work are, I mean, I don't know, I can't speak on behalf of, you know, all these people who are using these symbols, but because they are sensitive to institutions of power are oftentimes using them to open up a conversation to set context for how they want that word to be re- that work to be read. Um, so I think that's why, I mean, I can't speak for Huma herself, but I think she wanted to go ahead and kind of jumpstart us on that mm-hmm. conversation by using this symbol of prostration, mm-hmm. um, of prayer. And so, uh, I think that's a lot of the the way visual language works now in contemporary art. So, so do I hear you saying that I, I think I'm understanding better uh, your understanding of trying to keep these worlds separate in the sense that to create a safe space, it it has to be outside the church at this point. Mm-hmm. It, 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 that's where that's where the safe space will be. It will not be in the church for for a lot of these people. And maybe that's where where James Elaine's understanding mm-hmm. of missions mm-hmm. comes in, that he's mm-hmm. doing it for God. Yes. But this is not an ecclesial space. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's not the thousand-year-old. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, But I would also say, um, when I viewed Dowd's exhibit, and he will be, if Lord willing, will be able to come out and join us in April, um, he is um, a Tsinghua University um, arts professor, as well as an artist and a Christian himself. And when I saw his work and he stood behind me explaining each piece quietly, gently, after an hour and a half, I I just said, let me sit now and be in this prayerful, contemplative place. It was to me a space of of worship where I was safe. Hmm. It's a sacred space. A sacred space. It was a sacred space. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and I can say that, uh, I mean, I've experienced that in looking at our, I'm sure many of you all have as well. And I've even had people comment that about seeing, after seeing my work. Mm-hmm. I, had this one, I have this one um, Buddhist professor uh, who is not Japanese, but after looking at my work for graduate thesis, she said, Joyce, I feel like I've just gone to church. <laughs> <laughs> And the work wasn't the work wasn't Christian per se, yeah. but uh, I do think that work artwork has the power to quiet our spirits and orient it towards something. Yes. Now that may not always be God, but it has the power to do that. And I think that's a very powerful tool that um, can be used for good and, and bad. <laughs> okay, let, let's turn though to the other side of the dilemma that we have. Then, uh, what would you? each of you say that could be done by the church and what can be done in the church and what the, what can, what Christian Christians do as, as, as church people. I do know, um, that some churches are opening up spaces for Chinese Christian art. Some of it being as it were, uh, sort of normative sacred art, others of it being more experimental um, we have in our audience t- today um, Fuller's China Initiative artist in residence, H- James Hachi, mm-hmm. um, who comes out of the context of Nanjing Union Theological Seminary, mm-hmm. where much of his work was shown, along with a, a wood carver whose name escapes me at the moment. Uh, so, that, so that what I'm trying to say is that the Christian artists have been able to cluster or gather mm-hmm. around a seminary or in around a church environment. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and like the church has always been a safe haven, um, that it has provided haven for them. Um, mm-hmm. And so I, I think that continues today to some extent. Mm-hmm. It does, uh, it, particularly in, in Guangzhou, there are places there and outside of Beijing. 
Uh, I think it's very necessary for the church, regardless of whether the fact the church will ever be a safe space for artists. I think it's still very imperative that the churches make efforts to create a uh, welcome for artists. And so I think like organizations that have artists and residencies, for example, or are actually willing to, you know, buy art um, from people and hang it in their churches is a great way to start. Um, mm. But I also think, and I alluded to this a little bit in my paper, but probably not enough, is that um, I think in China, there's not the same baggage. And so the Chinese are actually much more open and the church is not necessarily mm. an unsafe mm. space. If anything, it's a place that is an alternative to government politics, like I've said. Mm. And so um, I think perhaps this is something we feel very astutely here in America or in the West, uh, but is quite different in China. You mentioned briefly the economic issues and mm. the financial support. I want to, you want to say more about that? Somebody is asking uh, how, how can we find the, the sort of financial uh, ways of supporting the arts, which is, which is a, it, it is an issue of finance and economics at the end of the day, and not simply an issue of openness, because artists need to be support. They need to, they need, need a life. They they deserve their their income. So important, it's really very very important. Um, in fact, it was uh, three years ago that I was approached by a gentleman who lives in Monterey Park asking me to, to consider this Chinese Christian art symposium that we're going to have for the sake of bringing the artists, for the sake of our getting to know the artists and get over this culture gap that Joyce so carefully brings out in her essay, um, enabling us to enter into the Chinese Christian artist's experience and hopefully come behind the mm -hmm. Chinese Christian artists with support, whether they stay here, or whether we return. Um, but certainly buying their works doesn't have to be neo-colonial. Mm. It, it can be a way of offering stewardship right. to a right. Chinese artist. Right. Good. Thank you. Yes. Um, and also I think, um, geez, finances are always such a, it's like such a scarce resource for artists that I feel like it, it's just the very beginning seed of so many problems. But uh, in our country specifically, I think it's it's um, a particular obstacle, namely because of the way national funding for the arts was affected by the religious right. So in the 80s with the Sensation Show and Andre Serrano's Piss Christ, you know, there used to be able to get a grant from our U.S. federal government to support your individual practice as an artist, and now you no longer can. Mm. And so that history, I think, is not, you know, artists haven't gotten over it, <laughs> yeah. you know, um, but that's not like, it's not like that in every country. So it's important to realize that this kind of uh, pluralistic international art context also is reflected in the kind of structures of financial support that exist. So, you know, many American artists, myself included, have oftentimes left the country to find support for the arts. And I feel like, I, I do believe, I mean, I actually think when the church patron the arts. It was a wonderful period and it was very, you know, led to a lot of artistic flourishing, although it was primarily ideological. But uh, I think that it would be wonderful if artists were, um, you know, if one of the stewards that they could count on was the church. I think that would be wonderful, but I don't know what that would take to happen in our country, <laughs> you know. Well, thank you. And I think that your conversation that you've elicited here has moved us in that direction. So thank you very much. And let's give them a round of applause, appreciation. Thank you.